Hi everyone, my name is Vincent Burke and I am a student coordinator at UCCS downtown. I'd like to welcome everyone today to, um, to Feed Your Curiosity and our segment today will be Hear From an Alum. We will have Josh Gates who is the Director of Community Impact for Pikes Peak United Way and he'll be telling us a little bit about what Pikes Peak United Way has been doing for the community since COVID began. We're going to bring him on in just one second once he goes live. So while we're waiting for Josh on our end, um, we're just going to kind of talk about maybe some of the stuff we're having coming up in the summer down here. Um, for everyone that's familiar, I'm sure we all know that Hamilton has come out on Disney Plus. And so we are going to be featuring a three segment um, sort of hybrid live and then we'll be posted onto YouTube after the fact discussion on what it means to look at historical narratives and look at those who have been left out of the historical discourse and how it can be uh, used to tell different stories and voices from those who have been left out of the political and historical discussion. Um, I, for starters, we'll be having, uh, as far as we know, we have uh, Dr. Kimber Smith, uh, Jared Benson, Nick Lee. So it'll be a good time. Uh, it looks like Josh just joined, so we're going to pull him up here and begin our interview. Hi, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Yourself? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Outstanding. Well, we love having you on here. So uh, let's just before we get down to business, can you tell me a little bit about yourself uh, for our audience? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a Colorado Springs native. I went to Whitefield High School and then off to UCCS to do my undergrad. So I was there from 2007 to 2011. Uh, I was a major in political science with minors in sociology and pre-law. Very cool. Um, after that, I worked in the nonprofit field um, since then. Uh, I kind of like the, you know, the Colorado stuff, hiking, camping, uh, fishing. I'm a music aficionado, so I like uh, going to concerts. Oh. Uh, like traveling, I've been to 49 of the 50 states. Very uh, cool. So just, just need Washington, and then I'll, I'll kind of be done with that adventure. And uh, my wife and I just had our first child about two months ago, so I'm kind of getting used to parenting and trying to get my feet underneath me with that. So that takes up the majority of our time. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that information. Congratulations on that. That's very cool. Thank you. Thank you. So how long have you been a, a, the Director of Community Impact at uh, Pikes Peak United Way for? So I've been in that role just a little over two years. I, I actually started as a, a volunteer when I was still in college. So my junior year, I started there and as a volunteer coordinator. So people who are interested in volunteering, I would connect them with physicians and nonprofits throughout town. And then if nonprofits needed a, a volunteer base to accomplish their mission, I would go out to schools and go out to employers and help recruit uh, volunteers to help them out. So I did that for about a year and a half. Um, I did fundraising uh, for United Way's programs for quite a few years um, and then took a break and lived in Washington, D.C. for about a year and then came back and I've been uh, in my current role for just a little over two years now. Fantastic. Well, um, speaking of missions, would you be able to maybe go into what the mission statement for Pikes Peak United Way is or what Pikes Peak, Pike, Pikes Peak United Way uh, does? Yeah, for sure. So our mission is pretty broad. It's to improve the quality of life in our community. But to kind of get more specific, we focus on improving youth success and family stability. Kind of that idea of when you look at generational poverty, a lot of times when kids grow up in poverty, they they'll continue to live in those situations as adults and, you know, kind of start that cycle over again. So as an organization, we're working to try to break that cycle by helping families get stable housing, stable incomes, making sure they have access to health care, but then at the same time, making sure that their kids have quality education, positive mentors in their life. Uh, last year, we helped about 87,000 people improve their education, income, stability, and health. So we focus completely on El Paso and Teller counties locally. Um, United Way is a worldwide organization, but each United Way is completely 
uh, operated independently. So we have our own board of directors, our own CEO. And that kind of gives us the ability to focus on the issues that uh, are important to our local community. So you'll hear about United Way a lot. You'll see them on like NFL uh, games, but each United Way is a lot different and each one will have um, specific programs and specific target areas. Um, and sometimes there are large organizations of hundreds of people, and sometimes they're a, a four-person shop, just kind of depending on the community. Oh. Um, so they're all different, but, you know, big picture, we're working to help young people be successful and helping families to be stable. Sure. It's a very noble cause. It's fantastic. Um, you know, while I was researching uh, Pikes Bike United Way a little bit, uh, the Community Investment Fund came up. Uh, during the search, and I'm just, I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that something that's local to uh, the PPUW, or is that part of the sort of global approach? Yeah, so I would say a little bit of both. So locally, it's, uh, it's definitely been a part of our organization for, I think, since we started, and we've been around since 1922 was the wow. first year. Uh, but the idea of it is, you know, when you think about somebody if they find themselves in a time of need, usually they don't just need one thing. It's right. not like they, they just need a, you know, a meal and then they're gonna be back to normal. Usually they're gonna need uh, you know, like housing, healthcare, um, childcare, a whole bunch of different things, um, help getting uh, more stable employment, things like that. And so when you think about kind of the average donor who wants to help make a difference in their community, but they're not exactly sure how they what they want to give to or how they want to contribute. The Community Investment Fund is a really good opportunity. It's kind of, a, I would describe it as a mutual fund for doing good things because we fund, right now we're funding 32 programs at 28 organizations uh, working on that youth success and family stability. Right. So it's things like early childhood education, which we know uh, kids have quality early care at a young age. That's going to lead to a more successful life to, later down the road. Um, it's parental training. It is help for people getting them stable housing. It's uh, employment training. Um, and in total, about 32 programs. And so the idea is that we're making sure that we're meeting the greatest needs in the community and we're funding the most effective organizations. Okay. So we have a team of about 50 volunteers that actually go out and visit each agency and they go over their application and their financials. And then we usually are able to fund about a third of the request to the community investment fund. So they have some really difficult choices to make in terms of what program is going to get funding and, and what program is not But it's a really good way to ensure that, you know, we might have a lot of funding in our community for utilities assistance, but not very much for housing assistance. So um, that committee might look at putting more towards housing programs. And they might find through looking at financials that these two agencies are by far the most effective and efficient with their dollars. So they're going to invest in those agencies. Okay. So by contributing to this fund, it's a really good way of just making sure you're meeting the greatest needs in the most effective way possible. And the great thing is, is that it's an open process. So anybody who wants to volunteer as a reviewer is, can reach out to us and serve on that committee. I actually did it when I was in college back in 2010. It was kind of one of my first experiences with United Way. So you can go out to the agencies and kind of help make those recommendations. And it's a really good way to get a feeling of what's going on in the nonprofit community. Right. You know, what, what is the need and what are these organizations doing now? Fantastic. So if someone wanted to donate to the fund or to help with this, would they go to a website? And yeah. on top of that, would, how would students or those looking to benefit from this program go about applying? Sure. So ppunitedway.org is our website, or you could just Google Pikes Peak United Way, and I'm sure you'll find it. Um, yeah, we take donations for the Community Investment Fund. Uh, we also have some other programs that we uh, operate to fill gaps in the community. And so one that students would probably benefit from uh, is 211. So that's an information and referral phone line. You literally just dial 211 on your phone. And it's things like utilities assistance, rent assistance, food, clothing, healthcare, school supplies, uh, prescription drugs. There's over a thousand resources in the database. Wow. So uh, we use, we've been 
our traffic's been very heavy from you know COVID, but it, it's something that we operate year round. Um, the call or the call center staff are in Monday through Friday, eight to five, and we definitely recommend you reach out to them either by calling two one one or if you go on the website, there's a instant message feature. Uh, there's a uh, text message feature if you feel more comfortable doing that. But they'll be able to see, you know, what is your zip code? Uh, do you have kids? Um, are you a military member or veteran? Are you a senior? They go down this list and then they give you a list of referrals for things that they know can help. Right. So it really cuts down kind of that red tape of getting okay. help. Um, so I definitely recommend people reach out to 211. There's also a searchable database on our website that they can find. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a similar database that the 211 staff uses. So people can thumb through that as well. But we certainly recommend um, people reach out to uh, 211 Navigator just because they are so well trained in the community resources. Oh. Um, so there's that. If somebody needs help, we put them towards um, 211. That's a great place to start. And if somebody wants to give help, obviously they can um, donate. But we have a pretty large volunteer program as well. So we place volunteers internally to help with some of the projects we're working on, but also we help other agencies vol find volunteers. Um, so if you go to our website and you click on um, I can volunteer and then click on opportunities, you'll see a pretty wide list of, of things that you can do. Right now we're trying to distribute 10,000 backpacks to kids before the start of the school season. So we'll need volunteers to help pick them up from stores, to help sort school supplies, to stuff backpacks, to drop them off at schools. So that's our uh, kind of big challenge uh, right now in the next month or so. But there's definitely a ton of opportunities throughout the whole year if you look at the website. Some of them are related to COVID, just helping out agencies that are getting increased demand for their services. Um, and then some of them are you know, ongoing. So I would just kind of push people towards that, that website. Excellent. Well, thank you, Josh. Yeah. Uh, so our last question here is, as an alum, what advice do you have for any future or current alum out there? Yeah, I, what really worked for me was getting involved in the community while I was a student. So for, for students that are in school right now, I would say just get outside of the boundaries of the school and make sure that you're learning about the industry that you're hoping to get into. So whether that's volunteering or working or doing an internship, or just asking somebody out to coffee and kind of learning more about what they do and how they got to that position. Um, it's gonna make the transition from school to, to your next step uh, much better. And kind of no matter what you're looking to do, there's somebody out there who's probably done it or done something similar. So sure. just get invested in the community and you know try things, see if you like it or not, and um, you know get to know people in the industry that you wanna go into. Outstanding. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And we really appreciate you coming on, Josh. Uh, we'll hopefully have you on for the future. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yes, of course. Thank you again. All right. We'll see you around. Take care. So thank you all for watching Feed Your Curiosity. We appreciate your time and all your effort going into this. Uh, we hope we will hope that you return for our next week's segment where we'll be meeting the dean or the new dean, the College of Business, Dean Markle. And you're not going to want to miss that because it's, you know, we want to be able to ask questions and, and talk to her. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>